Hello beautiful people, this is Vlad from Synaptic Schism and today we are going to close this chapter about AI. Now this is the fourth time that I'm recording this video and the reason for that was that all of the times that I was recording I found myself in this weird position where I was trying to explain why AI would be able to do or not do something and then I could not really relate it to the mock-up that I've uh, created and that I used in this video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to explain what I did and then somewhere on the screen while I'm editing I will put like a score of AI versus human to establish what is it that I did as a human that AI couldn't achieve from what I know of AI machine learning and also Ava and what is it that AI, machine learning, and I was specifically could achieve, okay? So I'll just go through the orchestration that I did and I will keep the score so that in the end we have like a view of what AI could or could not do if AI was composing this particular track the way that I did, okay? So let's go piece by piece. So first and foremost, the melody. So the melody was written by AI. I did not write this, this melody. What I did, however, was when the melody starts at this point, so the melody is being delivered by the first violins and also by a solo violin with the objective to add a bit more texture and a little bit more definition to the track, okay? Or in this case, to the melody itself. So this was the point of having these two instruments playing the melody, to have the melody playing, obviously, but then with more definition. The same applies to the second part of section A, when it's repeated here, it's exactly the same thing, okay? There are no changes, it's just that the instrumentation beneath it is a little bit different, but there are no changes at all. However, when we go to B1, I then add the clarinets here. I also add the horns. And I keep the violin 1 and the violin 2. And just for the sake of comparing, let's hear these things on their own clarinets and uh, horns. So this is the section A. So just a very high register kind of violin thing. Okay, it repeats in A in A2. Here you are listening to the horns actually because they play here. When we go to section B, then we get this. So in here we have the first violins and the solo violin doing um, this second melody. Then we have the horns with a marcato. And the clarinets just gluing everything together. The point that I'm trying to make here is that this choice of voicing had a purpose. The marcato of the horns to give that, that power that punch into the melody playing two octaves below it and then the clarinets just adding that glue just to make to for everything to have like more more body and more consistency because there was a lot more sound to it right and then when we go to the repetition of b2 which is like a fade out of the whole track what what we have then is we drop the horns in the clarinet and the violins go down one octave, okay? Now, could AI do this? Yes, but <laughs> AI would not do this purposefully. So it could do this on chance, like having a higher or lower probability of doing this, but it would not be a specific choice of orchestral colors to achieve these two parts. So never mind A1 and A2, AI is perfectly able to do that, but B1 and then B2, B1 with the 
with more range, more body, and then B2 lowering one, one octave. Actually, AI could do that and lower one octave, but I don't feel that at this point in time it would be purposeful. And that's it as far as melody is concerned. Now, for harmony, most of the track, I don't actually have harmony. The harmony in the sense of having chords playing, there's a little bit here in the violas, but it's a more texture than anything else because it has like a tremolo but giving body with harmony with chords it really only happens when i had this brass section here with the trombones and the horns now could ai create the harmony yes it actually did so the harmony comes directly from uh, the piano mockup that Ava created. However, what Ava did was maybe because it was a piano mockup to add rhythm to the piano chords. While in here, I'm a little bit more purposeful in the sense of the orchestration that I'm trying to achieve. Again, the question is could AI do this? Yes, it could. It could add at some point in time, and I noticed this because I created a bunch of tracks using. Uh, Iva's generation profiles for epic music and it definitely is able to at some point add brass to have like that effect and start to build up like that mid-range and give it a little bit more body so it is able to to do that I doubt that AI on its own would do something like going from the the harmony to then supporting the melody, which, which happens here. So this is just chords. The trombones continue, the horns change. Okay. So AI could do part of this, but not the other part. Now, still in the harmony part, but more thinking about rhythm and texture, there are a bunch of tracks here. So. We already went through with the, with the horns and the trombones, but there are these violas here. These violas play most of the time in tremolo. So the this is just like giving like a heery environment for this whole part. Then when the track starts to pick up more rhythm and starts to speed up, the viola stop and uh, the tremolo and go into a staccato, like a ostinato. Which is followed by the second violins playing the same ostinato but one octave higher. Today I have decided to have an ostinato here with a doubling of, of octaves. From my experience, yes. And it would probably add it in the point where it would start to grow uh, in intensity just the way that I did and needed more rhythm. It's perfectly able of, of achieving this. Is it able to use the same section, so the uh, violas, and then using the violas differently? From my experience, not really. We could add violas twice for an ostinato and so on, but it would probably at some point double them and so on and not really understand that both those things were violas. So maybe, maybe, maybe not. Also, in the kind of rhythm and embellishment texture kind of thing, we have uh, here these flutes. These flutes play for all of the song. Just giving... Just giving this, it's almost like a pedal tone on a higher register. And then these trills, these trills happen twice actually. Also, another woodwind giving just texture is the oboe here. And the reason why I added this, this oboe here was because this section was a little bit empty. Check this, you're going to listen to the art. And now the violas, the flutes, with the percussion, 
And then I felt that he needed something else, so I added the elbow. And then I used the elbow in the end, when the track was kind of going down, specifically to have the same texture repeating in the end. And the, only, the whole objective of this was to create familiarity in the end, like tying to the beginning of the track. I genuinely have never seen AI doing this, and I think that the reason for that is that this is a purposeful decision to tie to the beginning is a, a, a very timed thing. It's kind of, we want to look back to the beginning and get that emotion again. And last but not least, this harp, which you already listened to, it's just an ongoing rhythmic thing that it's consistently here, and that usually I only make it disappear when it's somehow conflicting with the melody. So a number of times that the melody is playing, so the melody is playing here, and I just use the harp like almost, it's not a counter melody, but it's just like a filler kind of thing. The same happens then here when the second melody plays again, exactly the same thing. When we are like in full steam, I, I basically have no harp, just some small feelings. And then again, the familiarity of returning to the starting point, and then I have the harp again. I have seen Ava produce something like this a number of times as an extra, and it usually sounds good, and it's not in a wrong place. Okay, so I will give this one. This one was not generated by Ava for this track. However, you will see these extras here, and you'll notice that this does like the end of the, mel the first melody, then the end of the first melody, the same time that it plays, and then throughout the second melody until it finishes. So yeah, AI is perfectly able to deliver something closer to this. I made different decisions, but I'm guessing that just from a probability point of view, Ivo is perfectly able of delivering this, so we should accept that AI is able to deliver this. Now, the bass is entirely the bass that Ivo wrote. It's literally just a copy-paste, the only thing that I did was I added cellos one octave higher. And then when the track goes up, I once heard this and I found it really interesting, which is the volume knob of an orchestra are the double basses. I kind of did it differently. I believe that that knob is the low end. So if we add low end when we are adding more instruments, the whole thing gets a lot more sound. And it makes sense because of the characteristics of the low end and how they resonate and so on. So we have the basses, the cello, and then we also have this low brass here. So this is playing the whole time, just like stain notes all the time. Very simple, effective, it's just it's just there. It's almost like a synthy kind of thing kind of thing. And then when the track evolves in um, in volume and intensity, I add the low brass. And then it goes away as soon as the track fades out. So this, again, was Ava. The only thing that I did was to add the low brass in the highest intensity. I'm guessing that's AI, again, on basically on probability, would probably be able to do something like this. It is able to do this doubling, even if we don't tell it. I have seen this happening. So I believe that it's perfectly possible. And it actually chose pretty well the place where the low end should disappear, because when the low end disappears, we can we, we are just left like with a residual emotion of what whatever is, is going on. So yeah, the low end probably I would be able to just deliver all of it. Now, the percussion, I have never used the percussion generated by AI, so I'm not got that comfortable to assume that it would be doing something different, better, worse. There is a growing in uh, intensity until this point, then in this point it starts going down, that's exactly what I did with with um, with the percussion. So the percussion starts very humble, let's say. 
it evolves over time. I keep adding things and then when, when it arrives here, So there's more intensi intensity, a lot more pieces. Um, I use Perkets, it's my favorite percussion library for a long, long time. And uh, I believe that I start with two instruments here. And at this point I have eight percussion instruments playing. And then in here they just fade out and, and um, the music finishes. I'm not going to evaluate. I believe from the rhythm that Ava is able to put on pianos to give that sense of evolution and growth, which you can, I can show you. So if we have, for instance, here. Then when we arrive here and the music starts to pick up. So the rhythm is different. It's very basic, but it's different. So it has a sense of evolution and even when it gets here. So there is the rhythm in here. So I would assume that AI is able to, at least with the evolution of the track, accompany that with some kind of percussion. Because if I open this here, you will notice from the velocities of of the piano strokes that it, it does evolve and it knows that the song goes from here, grows to here and then goes down. So I would expect that to be, to be possible. Now, last but not least, this whole section effect, these are just like here candy things. So this just repeats just to give like here candy stuff, and then things like this. So this is just adding to the complexity, the background, and then we, when we get here. So if you use this with the actual, with the growth of the track, check this out. It's actually pretty relevant. It stays in the background, but it's very noticeable. And then the hit just repeats. It just adds to the percussion, to the to all of that emotion and so on. I have not yet seen AI do anything with effects. I'm guessing that as soon as AI is able to write trailer music, it will be able to add effects. Right now, I feel that these are the kind of decisions that the human would be making and not an, an AI. So what are my final thoughts with, with this experiment. The way that I see it, AI is able to create movement and change rhythms and have some kind of character to the creation. It's not completely bland and neutral. There, there, there is evolution over the length of, of the track. It's able to add more rhythm, uh, higher velocities, and all, all of that good stuff. What I feel that AI isn't able to deliver and that it's up to us musicians, at least for now, I don't know how it's going to be in the future, is two things. First, our understanding of what colors are. And in this case, orchestral colors, but this can actually apply to other genres of music. So for instance, the way that, you, that we use distortion in, in metal and in rock is, is not something that I imagine AI doing easily in the future. So all of this idea of adding emotion through color of the arrangement and effects. I don't think that AI is able to do this. And the reason for that is that AI generates these things probabilistically, and these are decisions. Now, to be clear, AI is able to make decisions. There's no doubt about that. And AI is able to generate. However, generate while making decisions in a purposeful way, I don't see that happening anytime soon. It is always going to be a probabilistic model, which means that, I mean, if you try it, if you create a thousand tracks, there will be one that probably is going to fit, you know? And the second thing that I don't believe that AI does well is emotional timing. What I mean by this is things like this. So the, the tempo 
I raised the tempo from 90 beats per minute to 93. No one notices this. No one notices that it went from 90 to 93. I don't think that anyone is able to even count the difference. However, there's a considerable increase in emotion going from going from this A2 which is gaining like rhythm right? to then growing here and then to this climax it's 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 the rhythm that was introduced in A2 with the speeding up by just three beats per minute with this effect with the melody going also to the clarinets and to the and to the horns that creates this this emotion at the right time that is felt by the people that are listening to it there's no probability in the world that it's going to decide exactly to do this at this point in time to use the colors and to be able to deliver the timing so that it has maximum impact at the exact point where that impact should be. And that's what I think that emotional timing is all about. And I don't think that AI is able to do this purposefully. Probabilistically, yes, it definitely can. But deliver it this way, choosing the right instruments, delivering the right BPM, I don't see it happening. Not now, <laughs> and hopefully not in the near future. So this was a really fun experience to make. I work with AI and machine learning and it, it didn't actually cross my mind that I could go so much in depth into this. These, these were not the videos that I was thinking about doing, but exploring IVA and thinking about the AI applications in music led me to rethink about what these things can and cannot do. And I'm hopeful that this was a good experience to you to get in the, in my mind to understand what I was writing, but also the differences of what AI could or could not be doing at exactly the same place. All right. So I hope that you enjoyed this experience with AI. And uh, if you want to find me, I'm very easy to find on Twitter at Synaptic Schism. And until the next video, bye-bye.